How's it going everyone? My name is Roger. And I'm Mayra. Welcome to Our Travels. So I am Mexicans. I am really excited about this video. I am not from Mexico City. I am from Michoacan, but you have to visit Mexico City at least once in your lifetime. So I hope this video is helpful. I'm excited. You ready? Ready? Let's get started. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about Mexico City. We're going to give you a tour of the city. We're going to go to archaeological sites, museums. Uh, we're going to talk about cheap stays, transportation, and more. Let's get into it. Mexico City is one of the most populated cities in North America. We stayed a total of nine days. Um, we crossed uh, the bridge called CBX from San Diego, California, directly into the Tijuana Airport, and we spent a total of $636 and this is including our plane tickets yeah so that's including everything so now i'm going to break it down so we spent a total of 100 132 dollars round trip for our tickets we spent uh 80 dollars for the C for crossing the cvx is 20 dollars each and then we spent 18 dollars in transportation 146 in lodging and 300 dollars in food Okay, so we started off with Teotihuacan. These are the pyramids. Um, it is also a UNESCO heritage site. So these pyramids have been there for a long time. This was the main part of the city before Mexico was colonized. So it's amazing to visit. Uh, I advise you to bring a hat, uh, of course, some comfy shoes. You can purchase a hat there if you want as well. Um, we had a blast. We went up the pyramid of the moon and the pyramid of the sun and it's really cool to see these pyramids up close. Okay, so to get to Teotihuacan, we used public transportation, so we did a combination. First, we took the metro or subway uh, to Central Norte, and we paid $1 uh, for both, and that was round trip. And then from Central Norte, uh, we took a bus to Teotihuacan, and that was $10 each, and that was round trip. And then once you get there, the entrance fee is about uh, $3.50 and dollars, and that's per person. Next, we visit the Castillo of Chiputepec. Uh, this is a full-blown castle. This is actually the first castle we visited, and I believe it's the only one in Mexico. Uh, it's beautiful, everything from the floors to the walls. Uh, it's, it's really amazing. Also, the views from the outside are really nice. You can see the Lake of Chapultepec to one side and you can see the Angel of Independence to another. So we definitely recommend you visit this spot. Yes, and the entrance is only $4.50 per person. So this castle used to belong to the Emperor Emiliano and his wife Carlota. So inside, you're gonna see a lot of uh, furniture and artifacts uh, from the 20th century. They have some rooms open, so you're gonna be able to pick in there and see how it used to look. It's pretty fancy in there. You're also gonna see a lot of Mexican art. It's just beautiful inside. Um, so the pre president, Mexican president, Lazo de Cárdenas, um, established this castle as the headquarters of the uh, Museum of History. So we definitely recommend you to visit. Um, we uh, visited and toured the, the castle and at the end of the day of the afternoon, we spent it in the Lake Chapultepec, just seeing the boots there, eating the street food. Um, honestly, it's worth the $4.50, so we highly recommend you to visit. Now let's talk about Frida Kahlo. Some of you guys know about her artwork. You've probably seen her movie about her life with Salma Hayek. A really good movie, by the way. We recommend you watching it. Uh, you could actually visit her home where she did a lot of her painting. Uh, you could buy the tickets online for $13 or in person, same price. Uh, $4 with Mexican ID. And um, if you show up early if you're going to purchase it in per person. That's what we did to avoid some of the lines. And uh, inside, you're not allowed to film, unfortunately, but you will get to see where she did her painting. You'll get to see the bed where she stayed. Uh, you will get to see some of her tools, some of her original artwork. Uh, we definitely recommend you visiting it. You're able to take pictures um, inside, and but you are able to film only in the outside area, which is still pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. We're also going to leave the information on the website if you want to purchase the ticket ahead of time. It's going to be down there in the description section. And only seven minutes away from Frida's house, uh, walking distance, you can visit El Mercado Teotihuacan. 
in in this mercado you're gonna see uh, just different booths with mexican art or clothing so we recommend you to walk all around that's what we did we were like walking and just seeing everything but there was one thing we were looking for and that's the famous tlacoyos so someone told us about this lady that uh, makes them by hand so we looked for her and found her we had some of the tlacoyos these are famous in mexico city so i highly recommend for you to try them or they also have other boots inside uh, what i did is i went to find my um some earrings of molcajete and that's actually what I'm wearing right now, but that's where I found mine. So go and get some souvenirs and enjoy some tlacoyos. Next, we visit the Torre Latinoamericana. This is a huge building, 66 floors. Uh, it costs $9 per person to enter this building. You can uh, go all the way up on the roof and on the roof, you will see a 360 view of the city. Uh, there is uh, also binoculars that you could look um, at the city with. Uh, it's really cool up there. There's also a museum on the on the 38th floor and on the 36th floor. We also recommend you to make a quick stop there so you can check it out. And uh, this building has been around for about 66 years, and it looks awesome, by the way. So another place that you should definitely visit is Xochimilco. So Xochimilco is a floating uh, gardens of Mexico City. Uh, these canals were actually handmade by the Aztecs back in the day, and these are the only ones remaining, so you need to go and check it out. So here, before we actually um, got our floating boat, we went to the tourist office. So here they tell you uh, what was a good price for you as a visitor and for the people working. So uh, just as a reminder, in Mexico, bargaining is part of our culture. So you're gonna see that it's very common. Uh, in our case, we went with our travel friend, Angie, and she actually has a travel blog, it's Angie Viaja. And she has a whole explanation about Xochimilco too. So if you want more explanation about it, go and, and watch her video. So we uh, enjoy our ride with her and it was nice because they take you around to see the gardens. Um, there's also a legend about an island of dolls. We didn't pay to go there, but you, you have the choice to do so if you like. We just seen an example on the way. Um, it's nice. Uh, we enjoy a beer, a few songs with a mariachi. We got a good deal because it was on the weekdays. So just keep in mind that on the on the weekend it's a little bit more pricey, but it's definitely worth it. So I highly recommend you to go to such a place. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to hit that like button. It helps us out a bunch. Thanks. And subscribe for more guides. We also visited El Zócalo, which is basically the main city center of Mexico City. Uh, there's a lot of colonial architecture here, a lot of churches, a lot of Catholic churches. Even if you're not religious, uh, we recommend you to visit some of these churches. Go inside, it'll take you back in time. They're really beautiful and really well made. Um, you could also walk around the outside and uh, see, uh, possibly see some Aztec dance performance. Uh, you could even get a blessing if you like. And, and enjoy your time here. We we were lucky enough to visit on Independence Day, which is September 16th. Um, we enjoyed a live performance. We enjoyed some fireworks. It was a great time. And only seven minutes away, walking distance from El Zócalo, you can visit Templo Mayor. So this temple used to belong to the Aztecs, and unfortunately, it was mostly destroyed by the conquistadors. But it's still worth to go see it. It's very interesting. Um, until now. Arche archaeologists continue to find different artifacts of that time, so it's very interesting. Um, also around this area, we want to let you know that uh, there's a lot of high-end restaurants and actually it's known uh, for those restaurants that to be really good food, to offer really good food. Um, at the time we visited, we were mostly eating street food, so on our next visit, that's on, on our to-do list. We also recommend visiting La Casa de los Azulejos, which is the house of the tiles. There's, uh, it's surrounded with tiles in the inside and the outside. It's an 18th century building. Um, there's two stories to this building. Um, the bottom floor, there's a restaurant, really packed when we went there, and uh, they're playing live music. Seems super fun. You could admire the architecture on the second floor. So this is another uh, place that we recommend you visit.
In only three minutes away from La Casa de los Azulejos, you can find Museo de Bellas Artes. Um, it's beautiful on the outside and to enter in here they charge $4. We didn't go, but we do wanted to provide that information for you. We also visit El Barrio Chino, which is Chinatown in Mexico City. We got to watch a live performance, also worth it. And just to let you know, all of these locations are nearby each other, so it's walking distance, so you don't need any uh, transportation to get to them. Now let's talk about the iconic Angel de la Independencia. This is the Angel of Independence and it's located in Paseo Reforma. Um, this is a good spot to visit. Uh, this is one of the iconic statues of Mexico City. Um, you could also see how the, they rebuilt some steps because uh, it seems like it is sinking and uh, it's a great spot to visit. Take a few pictures and enjoy. So about 70% of Mexicans are Catholic and the reason I mention this is because there's this one church that is very significant for the Catholic community, especially the Mexican Catholics and that's um, La Basilica de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe or the Virgin of Guadalupe and uh, there's a whole legend about it and uh, there's like the original painting is believed to be at the church. Right now when you visit there's actually a church, the original one which is sinking and you can see from the outside how it's tilted so they built a new one next to that one and you can go inside and see it and um, I recommend to visit even if you're not religious just because it's very symbolic for the community and then you you have a better understanding um, of the Mexican Catholic community. I've also heard that people travel from all over Mexico just to visit this church in Mexico City. Um, so if you do have some time, I advise you to visit it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool. Um, also, they have a market nearby where you can get souvenirs or you can get something to eat and make a day out of it. Another spot that we visited was the Museum de Antropología. Uh, this museum is probably the best museum that I have ever visited in my life. It shows you a lot about the different indigenous groups all around Mexico. It also uh, shows a lot of artifacts, uh, like the Aztec artifacts found in Mexico City. Um, there is so much to see and uh, you will enjoy. And you know, actually Mexico City is known to have 150 museums. So it's hard to pick or to visit all of them in nine days. Uh, so we were not able to visit all of them obviously, but there's some that I highly recommend as well that we couldn't visit and that's Museo Sumaya, Museo Arte Popular, uh, Museo de Diego Rivera, and uh, the Dolores Olmeda too, and obviously more. <laughs> All right, so now let's talk about transportation in Mexico City, and it's actually very convenient. So just to let you know, we are budget travelers, so we like to save, so we did like a mix of transportation. We only spent a total of $18, and we did like a mix of uh, El Metro or the subway. The tickets are only 25 cents, and you can get to one location with one or two round trip. So it's very convenient, but where uh, we couldn't take the metro, we used the local uh, bus transportation and it's also cheap, 50 cents, $1, depending on the distance. Uh, we also used the Uber twice. Um, the first time when we got there uh, from the airport to our stay, the second time is on Independence Day because it was a little bit late. Um, so it's very convenient. Yeah, one thing that we uh, we would advise you, this is what they told us, to avoid rush hour, which is the time that people are coming off of work or going to work. And the reason for that is because the, the trains or buses, they get really packed where you can't even move, you know? Sorry. And um, because of that, um, we were on a, on a train one time on rush hour, and we, when I arrived to the area, I no longer had my phone. Somebody took it from my pocket. So it's just one of those unfortunate things that sometimes could happen in traveling. Um, but we continued using it after that. Um, when we weren't in rush hour, nothing like that ever happened again. It was totally fine. If you do happen to go uh, on a time like this, um, just you, as long as you keep your phone, you know, in your front, if you have a backpack, you just put it in the front. As long as you keep an eye on your things, you'll be totally okay. Okay, so now let's talk about lodging. So what we did is we stay in two different Airbnb locations. The first one, it was only five minutes and over from the airport, and that was at Abuelita's house, and she uh, rents the rooms. We got a private room with a private bathroom, really clean and spacious, 
and it was only $11 for both. And, and then we uh, stayed in another uh, place, Casa Saavedra, and this was, was $12 for both. We got a private room, really nice and clean, and uh, we had a private bathroom too, it was outside. And in this one, this one is only eight minutes away in car from uh, Casa Frida, or Museum de Frida. And this one, uh, on every Sunday, they have a farmer's market, and it was really nice because we got outside, we actually had breakfast there, and just enjoy walking around, and it was really good. So we'll leave you the websites for the Airbnbs for these locations if you guys want to take a look at them. We recommend them. All right, now let's talk about food. We mostly ate street food in Mexico City, and it was delicious. Um, we never got sick or anything. We were totally fine. Uh, what we usually do as a rule of thumb, we just make sure the place is clean, looks clean. Uh, if we see there's a lot of locals eating there, we go ahead and eat. Um, but as far as like brushing our teeth and drinking water, we usually drink bottled water and, and stuff like that just to, just to keep safe. So after we finished off Mexico City, we took a seven hour bus ride to Grutas de Tolantongo. If you haven't heard of this spot, this is a dream place. This is one of the bucket list places to visit. And uh, if you like hot springs, that's exactly what it is. Uh, blue water, the place is beautiful. Um, we have a, a video that we made specifically on how to get there and um, what you're gonna experience on this trip. If you're in Mexico City, don't miss this place. You should go there, the place is beautiful. So check out the video when you get a chance. Okay, everybody, so this concludes our video on Mexico City. Hopefully it's helpful on your trip to Mexico City. Uh, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe for more videos like this. We'll see you in our next video, and Viva Mexico! Viva!